Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. Uh, so today I did a little bit of a different format. I had a podcast, really short one, about 20 minutes long, with Evgeny Kim. Now I know Evgeny Kim for a while, several years. Uh, he also works in a QA field and he also has his own recruiting company. So we discussed uh, in general what's going on with the tech market. Uh, possible future of the tech market, including QA profession, uh, specifically in the United States. And we broke the podcast in two parts. Now on this channel, you're going to see part two of the conversation. And then in the description under this video, you will have link to part one that will be on his channel. Uh, on his channel, he also does a lot of mock interviews with hiring directors and managers, uh, specifically in quality assurance. So if you're preparing yourself for the interview, I recommend go and check them out. The materials there, the questions, they're pretty good for the interview preparation. Okay, hopefully you enjoy it. And if you have any ideas for uh, more videos like that, like questions you would like to ask that we can discuss in format of a podcast, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll make it happen. All right. Do you see any trends like where are we going with our test automation tools yep. plus AI? How will it impact? What do you think? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There are two topics here that we can unpack. So one is the tools and what tools to learn if you go into automation. Mm -hmm. And I would say don't learn Selenium. Don't start with Selenium. Don't start with Java. The reason for that, there are a lot of legacy systems that are running Selenium and Java, but those legacy systems are already built out and there's a lot of people that specialize, QA engineers that have been doing Selenium Java for years. So there's a good pool of candidates there. Plus it's very hard to start with. I would go with a modern framework if you go going into automation like Playwright. So JavaScript is a lot easier to start. And then Playwright is a lot easier to set up and manage. Like I have videos on my channel. In two hours, you can write your first test and you'll be good to start. It's a lot easier than if you would start with Java and Selenium per se. Less candidates in there, more visibility, more modern tools. And if you go and look up the most popular tool right now in NPM Package Manager, there's a web page called NPM where you like download different packages. So if you look the trending tools, Cypress is still the top tool, but the way how Playwright is growing, I think it's going to be uh, more popular within a matter like of months, is like maybe half a year. So it seems like Playwright is going to be go to a new standard for automation pretty soon. So I would just recommend doing that. Now, in terms of AI, funny story, I was... I was concerned that AI might do a lot of automa automation eventually and we will have less jobs because of AI. But from the look of things, it seems that the AI is going to actually make more jobs. Not only AI-related jobs, but generally in testing. Uh, I will tell you one of the stories that, first of all, I read a lot on LinkedIn. But uh, one of the stories that happened recently, a person in Canada was trying to get, refund their tickets for whatever reason like injury or something, they're still going to fly, but maybe there was some urgency to it. doesn't matter. So the AI that company utilized, I think it was Air Canada said, yeah, the AI helper online said, sure, we will refund your ticket. You can fly, fly we will refund it. And he f used the ticket and then he asked for a refund and the company said, oh, no, that's not our policy. AI made it up. So he went to court and the court said, it doesn't matter if you utilize a third-party tool, it's on your webpage. It's your representative, and if it said you will refund it, you have to refund it. So he won the case, and he got refunded the ticket because of the policy that AI made up. That's just a, like a, the tip of the iceberg. But the thing is, a lot of software is very complex. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of context and understanding on how to use it. So if you give it to AI, you're going to have exactly results like that, especially in regulated industries it's going to be a disaster. And I've read that several companies reporting or people working that since they implemented AI, they start having more issues. The development is faster, but the amount of errors increased. The demand for testers also increasing because you need to test more now after the AI did the job for whatever development it was doing. So I don't think it's going to replace QA. I think it's going to become a tool for assistant, like an assistant for development and for testing uh, in general. So it, eventually, I think it's just going to create more jobs. Yeah. 
I can 100% agree with you on the first part, especially I switched to Playwright myself. I was using Cypress quite like for one, one and a half year, and then I switched to Playwright. I, I, it just fits to my needs. And definitely agree with the setup because sometimes you just need a whole blown tutorial how to set up the framework, especially Selenium, forget about it. But yeah, with NPM package, it's very simple on any machine. It's just running. You can do it in, in a five in five minutes, literally. Yep. I percent agree with that. In terms of AI, yes, like a lot of things that are haven't been tested for sure. And but I think that hundred percent like AI, chat GPT especially, it will be not replacing, but Complementing the Google search for sure. Actually, the learning curve shrinked dramatically compared to, for example, I'll just give you an example. I had to set up, even with a setup, right? When you start doing something, you read the documentation, you start looking into tutorial, you doing this step by step, and it takes days. With uh, ChatGPT, it takes hours, maybe yep. even less. Right. And Stack Overflow, right? Yep. I think Stack Overflow will be. Uh, I like Stock Stack Overflow, but I think it will be. They need. They will need to shift. So let me ask you this: How often, when you use ChatGPT, you ask for something? And I, I absolutely agree with you. It helps a lot, especially if you're learning something. You can ask a question, and ChatGPT will give you a good answer generally. But how often, if you ask for some code, it will give you some non-existent functions or something that. Unless the subject, you will not be able to fix yourself. Like you would ask, hey, how do you do this in, play or in Playwright? And instead of locator, it's going to throw out just something ridiculous that doesn't exist in the tool itself, in the framework. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely can do. And it, it does. But what it allows you, uh, skip several steps. Yeah. It allows you to skip several steps. It, it will not work. You still have to do your due diligence. It doesn't mean that, oh, Playwright will write for you the application. You will be no code, low code developer without knowing anything. No, you will learn along. You will understand that, oh, it's not working. Why it's not working? That This is your job to understand why it's not working. Yep. And even ChatGPT can help you out. Like why it's not working? Your right. code is not working. Yeah. Another thing that is I find quite funny because I keep on reading about AI all the time because it's a pretty fascinating topic. But have you read about... So Google is doing Gemini, right? The, the one assistant that yep. incorporate in the search and it gives you top looked searches or most popular kind of a thing or it's learning based on them. And some people were asking like ridiculous questions or it was give ridiculous answers for normal questions even so like how many rocks a day a human could eat should eat and gemini would say oh three rocks at least is <laughs> yeah. is a good amount of rocks for a human to eat oh what do i do if i'm really depressed and then some it grabbed like a response from reddit oh you should just go to golden gate bridge and jump something like that so very something that human tester would never let go through so yeah we have to be really careful there's a lot of talk about ai safety and Many people think, okay, this is because AI is going to take over, but I don't think it's the actual threat. The threat is if you allow AI to code and do things like how many rocks you're going to eat per day, it's just going to create something that will be really hard to control and manage. By design, it will be doing something that is dangerous, not even because it wants to harm you, but just because the way it is created things just in that ridiculous go and eat three rocks a day kind of thing. But yeah, the dangers of AI, if you don't monitor it and don't test it properly, you're going to end up with a really bad code. In one of our previous podcasts, we had, you probably know him. I don't know. I don't know from the Bay Area, Peter Tatsin. He okay. is a, yeah, he is a machine learning data scientist. And he explained it really well because... AI, they call it like illusions when the LLM or machine learning basically, yeah, it starts mating up. Yeah, because there's not enough training data, exactly. it will come up with ridiculous answers based on yeah. other data that is not yeah. related. Yeah, yep. 
And we just Hel- need to Hel- be... I think it's like hallucinations or something. Yeah, hallucinations. Oh, ha- hallucinations. You're right. Yeah. Hallucinations, not illusions. Correct. Yeah. And we just need to be aware of it, right? We just need to be aware. Of, you, you cannot rely 100%. Blindly, it's, it's, it's not going to work. Let's maybe ask people if they're interested in more topics. Let us know in the comments. And if you like the today's video, we can create something like that in the future based on the questions you have in the comments. 100%. Yeah. Ask us whatever you want to know from recruiting perspective, from testing perspective. And if you're watching this on my channel, go into the descriptions and check out Evgeny Kim's YouTube channel. So He has a lot of great videos where he works with real managers doing uh, mock interviews. So preparing people for interviews for QA. They're really good. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Bye-bye.